triple expansion steam engine that needs some attention. Part 5. Removing the engine from the baseboard in order to examine the broken connecting rod more closely. Some parts of this engine are well made and others are not. It is just as expected and I knew what I was buying. It's early morning, New Year's Day 2022 and I'm editing the video I made last year. If you follow my channel you will realise that this is a Stuart 10V that I've just finished rebuilding. I fitted the last bolt to hold it to the wooden base and so now it can go into the house. These arrived in the post the other day. They are rolls of 4mm or 5 30 seconds of an inch copper piping. I use this size of piping very frequently and I'm always running out so I thought I'd buy a good stock. When you work with dirty oily steam engines it is essential to have a good supply of cloths to keep everything clean. A few years ago when I was a computer engineer I used to service a company that made curtains. Not unsurprisingly I got on very well with the company maintenance man and he used to give me the roll ends that were left over when the curtain lining was cut to length. I've got quite a few of these roll ends left and they really do make excellent general purpose wipers. Now is a good time to take stock of projects for 2022. In the background is my sterling single, I do need to finish this, it's been hanging around for too long. I need to pull my finger out and finish the paintwork, I've been doing a bit of rubbing down on this recently. It's going to take quite a bit of time to complete this project and I haven't even started preparing the tender for painting. And then there is this, a double Stuart 5A. I'm thinking about converting this Stuart Twin 5A back to two single Stuart 5As. But I'm struggling to make up my mind because it's quite well made. But the two two and a quarter inch diameter cylinders use a lot of steam. And even my excellent Castle Steam V6 boiler struggles to provide enough steam to run it properly. But the main job for the first part of this year is completing this. In this image is a brand new Stuart 504 boiler, a Stuart S50 and a Stuart 10V with the reversing gear. This job is not panning out as I originally planned. From my original quotation, the job was altered. I had to fit reversing gear to the Stuart 10V. There were a lot of problems doing this. If you watch the series Building a Stuart Steam Plant, you will see how many problems I had. Now it runs really well in forward and reverse, but that was not the case when I first put it together. Also on the plant is going to be this nice little Stuart S50. It needs a coat of paint and a little bit of tweaking. This will drive a generator. As it's the Christmas break, I'm still in holiday mode. So I thought what I would do today is have a look at the broken connecting rod on this Stuart triple expansion engine. In this clip you can see that the high pressure cylinder connecting rod is definitely broken. This engine is a bit of a mess, so why did I buy it? Well, it's quite simple. I thought it was ideal for a video series subject. I have to admit, I do like Stuart triple expansion engines, and I've seen them change hands for quite a lot of money. Now I have three of these. The first one I bought from a man called Ronnie Mall in Scotland, and that is a joy to behold. Personally, I feel that I am not capable of building one of these engines. You really do need to be a very good engineer to make them work. However, I can repair and rebuild them, and this one is by far the worst of the three that I have. The second engine was kindly sent to me by a gentleman in America, and that is featured in my series Completing a Stuart Triple Expansion Engine. This one I bought very recently. It was on eBay, then it was taken off eBay, then the owner contacted me to see if I could repair it. I took one look at it and said, no, sorry, it's impractical to do that. And in the end, I bought it at a very fair price in my opinion, which was just above the price of the castings. With the engine on my kitchen table while the seller was in the room, I was scanning every part of it. And it had all of the usual problems. Looking at this engine closely, I think it started off okay. The machining is of a good standard, but then it went downhill when it came to fitting the rest of it together. There are many things wrong with it, and some of these things are quite difficult to fix. This is only part five of the series, and most of it's been spent just tinkering about with it. I never tested it before I bought it. I didn't have to. I knew what was wrong with it. Time now, I think, for some drastic action. This is a Dremel cutting disc. I used this to cut off the kinked piece of copper pipe that was threaded into the water pump, and here I'm removing what's left of it using a pair of pliers. 
the piece of copper pipe that fed the condenser's vacuum pump I removed in a previous episode. The engine's strangely fitted to this board. It's fitted to a piece of metal with very long, thin bolts. In the last few clips, you've been watching me removing the nuts from these thin bolts. Please don't write in about this. I am aware that I should have removed the metal plate first, but I was just curious to see whether I could do it this way around. I'm using the Stanley knife blade to stop the bolt from rotating. On one of the other bolts, I used a pair of flat side cutters. And in the end, success, I could lift the engine off the baseboard. Time to get one of my pieces of curtain lining very dirty. Underneath this baseboard was some sort of flanneling glued to it, and believe me, it really is glued to it. It's very well stuck. Here I'm lifting off the two pieces of wood that support the engine, and you can see exactly how long the bolts are. This is the underside. It took just about all of my physical strength to rip off the piece of flanneling to start with, and I'm left with this. I started to clean off this mess using my four-inch belt sander, and even that struggled. This clip shows me starting to remove the nuts from the bolts that go through the metal plate into the baseboard. I put the washers and nuts back on these parts because I will probably reuse them when I mount the engine once it's rebuilt. I'm not sure that I'm going to use these pieces of wood though. They're a little bit over square. I think I would prefer to make some proper marine engine bearers which have a concave cutout at each end. Very much like the ones that I made for my Twin 5A that I show at the beginning of this video. After a final clean using a piece of curtain lining, the baseboard and the piece of metal can be put in a safe place, because it will be some time before they're required again. I have a slight problem with my brain. I have to be very careful not to stall on any of the projects. Once I was building from scratch a seven and a quarter narrow gauge locomotive called a Sweet William. That job stalled because I didn't have a drill the right size to drill the exhaust port at the rear of the cylinder blocks. The work stopped and I couldn't face going back into the workshop for quite a while. In the end, about a year later, I sold it part built. And that's why I have to be careful, I definitely do not have an engineer's brain. Removing what was left of the connecting rod from the crosshead was a pain. Holding one end of the pin with my pair of pliers, I used the spanner to loosen the nut, then I rolled the nut off like this with the scriber, but the pin didn't want to come out. At first I thought it may have been threaded into the fork of the connecting rod, but thankfully not, it was just tight. Once again as shown previously, I started off with my Stanley knife blade, which loosened it, then I used a small screwdriver and in the end it popped out. And by that I mean the connecting rod pin. Once I got the pin out, I refitted it into the fork on the end of the connecting rod and it was a good fit. All the slop is on the crosshead. Along with quite a lot of other jobs, at some future time in the series, I will remove the crossheads, drill them out and bush them with phosphor bronze. It's time now to remove the split bearing which forms the big end. This was easy using a thin spanner and a nut spinner to remove the nuts. I was concerned about the condition of the crank pin, but thankfully the condition of the crank pin is very good indeed. And believe me, this is not always the case if the engines have been run without oil. In this clip you can see that the crank pin's bearing surface is in good condition. The more I look at this engine, the more I realise where the problems are. I'll list these problems in a future episode when I start the job for real. In the top left of this image, I know it's not in a very good place, I was incompetent with the camera. Anyway, this is the end of the connecting rod that supports the big end split brasses. And you can clearly see that the holes are not in the middle, more about this later. What I'm going to do for now is drop these parts into a tub of gun wash. I generally use cellulose thinners or gun wash for degreasing purposes. And as you can see by the colour of it, I do reuse it to a limited extent. Quite a few viewers keep giving me advice about using brake cleaner. And yes, brake cleaner is a very good solvent, but it normally comes in an aerosol. My workshop is quite small, and I don't want to be spraying poisonous brake cleaner in the confined space which is my workshop. I'm going to finish this episode with a shot of this displacement lubricator, and this is what I'm up against with this engine. The workmanship is sort of okay, 
but it hasn't got any style. And when I've finished rebuilding this engine, guess what? I will fit a genuine Stuart displacement lubricator. I really could not live with this on the engine in such a visible place. That's it for this episode. Welcome to 2022. Stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.